came not only the solid edifice of a real and lasting peace, but also the blueprints for a multi-party democracy that would allow for a relatively smooth transition into an Angola that was one in its development and in the diversity of its peoples and cultures. Thirty-five years later, we no longer sing of the war and the sorrows of death. United and fearless, we take pride in our national flag. Are reunited in our anthem and cry, Forward Angola, towards development. independente, livre e senhora do seu destino, foi o sonho realizado em 1975. Angola em paz e democrática é o sonho tornado realidade em 2002. Angola unida e próspera, em que cada um viva bem, é o sonho que podemos realizar. É a nova caminhada que começou. Now that we have seen the end of the suffering and uncertainty caused by many years of discord and violence that hit people, body and soul, separated families and caused massive damage to the social and productive fabric, Angola is living in new times, times of hope. The visit of His Holiness Pope Benedict XVI to our country confirmed to the world that mutual dialogue and comprehension engender pardon, magnanimity and understanding as paths for reconciliation between brothers. Estamos agora na encruzilhada da paz e do desenvolvimento. A paz social consolida-se com a satisfação das necessidades materiais e espirituais dos homens que o desenvolvimento propicia. It is time to roll up our sleeves, rebuild political confidence and consolidate democracy. An intense process of restructuring the state apparatus has begun with the constitution of a united government and the reconciliation of the Angolan armed forces, incorporating soldiers who once fought each other fiercely. In the social sphere, thousands of ex-combatants have been reintegrated into society, benefiting from professional training and employment or retiring with guaranteed income and housing. The consolidation of democracy and the constitutional transition that began in the 90s with the opening up to a multi-party system and the holding of pluralist democratic elections made it possible to consolidate the democratic institutions, in particular to approve the Constitution in February 2010. Among its structuring principles, the Constitution reaffirms and upholds pluralist and representative democracy and the unitary nature of the state the valuing of work and respect for the dignity of the human person, free economic and business initiative, social justice, citizen participation and the rule of law.
aware that in order to achieve this objective, we had to maintain peace and national unity, have strong and capable institutions, organize a democratic, pluralistic society in which all could participate, and provide the country with a defense and security system able to guarantee national security, we set out on a new journey towards progress. Today, the executive, legislative and judicial powers conform to the constitution of the Republic and the institutional capacity of public bodies has been strengthened with the aim of responding to the basic tasks of the state and the new challenges and targets arising from the statutes of supreme law. With regard to state administration and local power, a set of actions are underway aimed at decentralizing decisions, creating administrative and financial autonomy for both provincial governments and municipal administrations, which will come to be budgetary units. With regard to the new political framework, the Constitutional Court has been established and the independence of the judiciary strengthened. The state is working on guaranteeing better access to justice for citizens with the creation of municipal courts and the improvement of its staff with training at the National Institute of Legal Studies. The law of public probity has been approved and now regulates the performance of state functions and those serving in institutions whose conduct is established by democratic principles of ethics, transparency, responsibility and good governance. With regard to defence and internal security, a set of reforms are underway in the armed forces and all bodies of the Ministry of the Interior in order to meet the demands of the new times. In addition to the updating of equipment and the ongoing training and renewal of personnel, improvements are also underway in living conditions for the forces, especially those living in barracks. Peace and national reconciliation have opened up new horizons to the vitalizing of the economy and creation of sources of income other than oil. In addition to fiscal balance and monetary and exchange stability, greater prominence has also been given to fostering improved living conditions for the population, based on a strategy of fighting poverty and the national strategy of food and nutritional safety through specific actions within municipal programs geared to improving the living conditions of the country's people. The main currents of the executive stress, rural development as a means of reinforcing a more balanced division of national income, harmonious territorial development via improved management of local administrations, diversification of national production increasing internal production of consumer goods, substituting imports and boosting exports. The average growth rate in non-oil-based GDP was 13.3% as opposed to 10.9% of oil GDP. Between 2002 and 2008, the gross national product tripled and the average annual growth rate was 14.6%. The stability of the Kwanzaa against the US dollar has been one of the hallmarks of the monetary policy. The national measures adopted have allowed for an agreement to be signed with the IMF that has served to bring in more financial resources and has also meant international recognition of how correct and opportune the adjustment measures were that have allowed us to protect our international reserves and ensure macroeconomic stability.
The positive assessment of our economic policy and the sovereign credit rating of our economy, in addition to granting the country prestige, have strengthened the conviction that Angola is on the right track to overcome the international financial crisis. Today, the Angolan economy continues to grow, unlike the situation in many countries of the world. The public investment program in the transport sector, whether in renovating roads, bridges and railways, or in new constructions, has allowed for the rapid resettlement of over three million people who had been uprooted from their zones of origin and easier circulation of people and goods throughout the national territory. In all means of transport, ports and airports, the volume of cargo handled tripled between 2002 and 2009. The expected conclusion and recovery of the Bengala Railroad, the expansion of the ports of Mossavides and Lobito, and the future construction of the port of Dand and the ongoing road building and renewal program will allow the country to transform itself within the next few years to a logistic platform of significant importance in southern Africa.